Welcome to the Unreal Directive. Have you ever wished you can paint actors within your Unreal Engine viewport as if it were an open canvas? Well, now you can in Unreal Engine 5. Let me show you how. Once in Unreal Engine 5, we're going to want to enable a singular built-in plugin. So heading up to Edit, Plugins, in the search field type in Asset Placement. Make sure you have a space in between the two words or nothing's going to show up. And what we want is the Asset Placement Editor Mode plugin right here. So go ahead and enable that and restart your editor. Once you're back, you're going to want to go up to Select Mode in the top left of the editor and Select Placement, which is a new entry in the list. You'll be greeted with three new panels. You have the Palette panel, which is where you designate what actors you're going to be painting. You have the Palette Details panel, which is where you're going to adjust the settings for those individual actors in your palette. And you have the Placement, which is essentially your configuration on how you're going to be painting into your canvas. Now let's start adding actors to the palette panel. There's two methods on how we can approach this. By default, we're going to have the mirror content browser selection toggle button at the top enabled. So if you go to your content drawer or content browser, whatever you select here is going to be perfectly mirrored in the palette. So if you select one, one's going to show up here. If you select many, all of those are going to show up in the palette. Do note that whatever you have in your palette is what you're going to be painting. So if I start painting now, it's going to paint every single one of these assets, which is not desirable. So I highly recommend selecting one, or if they're just a cluster of the same type of asset, you do that. It's, it's quite nice. Another thing is besides the, the mirroring content browser selection. So if we disable this, there's going to be a indicator for dropping assets here. So what this entails is you can go ahead and select from the content browser. And as you can see, it's not mirroring it, but what you can do is now drag and drop this here. So now you have set actors within the palette here and your selection does not change what's in there. But if you go ahead and enable mirror again, it's then going to replace that. And if you already have a selection in the mirror and you disable it, those actors are still going to persist. And if you do not want any of these actors here, you can go ahead and right click and select the clear palette option and it's going to clear your palette. Another aspect of the palette that's very important are basically presets. They're called the placement palette assets. And this is how you can designate a pre-configuration of assets for painting. So you can go ahead and you can have different leaves, trees, rocks, books, basically anything. And you can just switch between them on the fly and start painting. They're quite useful. I'm not going to use the placement palette for this demonstration. Instead, I'm going to switch to the mirror content browser and select this tower right over here. Now I'll select it within the palette panel to display the editable settings within the palette details panel. There's a lot of amazing options here. Anywhere from optimization to flat out just customizing your asset. So since I have a static mesh, there's going to be options here designated to a static mesh. Up at the top, there is the component class, which surprise, surprise, you're not painting the actual asset, but you're painting instances of the asset, which is quite a bit more optimized. So you have instance static mesh, you have hierarchical, you have foliage, and you can also create your own for being able to customize it however you please. You can override materials, you can change mobility, you can change different optimization options pertaining to the instance stack mesh, and there's a lot of different options here that you can go ahead and configure. Now in the placement panel, this is where you can go ahead and start painting. So let's say I want to paint this, I want to start painting, and as you can see, it's painting, and it's also painting along the normal axis of the asset itself. And even on walls, it's quite useful. Though this is starting to become unsightly, so let's use the erase tool. So I'm going to go ahead and go to erase and I can actually start erasing what I just painted. Um, that's quite handy. And then I, if I want to add a singular one, I can go ahead and select the single tool and start Moving it about, as you can see, it still samples the normal regardless. That's the power of this tool. And once you place it, you can go ahead and do fine tune adjustments. So if it's too high, too low, or you need to rotate it, you can do so. Quite useful. And if you need to select multiple different uh, assets 
to do any additional customizations or editing, you can go ahead and lasso those, which is basically you're painting a selection. And you can go to the select option here and you can go ahead and adjust those. Down below that, you have all, a whole bunch of different options for adjusting how it aligns to the axis of the normal. The rotation options, scale options, location options, and even what assets you want to place it on. So, for example, these are static meshes over here. If I disable this, and then if I go to single, you'll notice that it's not sampling the normal of that asset now. And it's also going to be the same if I disable the landscape and enable static meshes. Now you can see that there's not going to be an option for uh, the landscape, but as soon as I go to a static mesh, you can place on a static mesh. So far, I've only demonstrated static meshes. Let's actually show some of the other possibilities. For example, skeletal meshes, which I actually don't suggest this method, but you can if you want. You can paint Echo's hair everywhere. You can paint Echo everywhere. That's going to get unoptimized very fast. But the other form of actor would be blueprints. BP Mo Actor is actually a pretty decent one right here. So let me get close to the ground so you can actually see this. It's a rather small actor. Oh, I actually have a few later on the ground from an earlier test. Let's go over here a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go to paint and I'm going to start painting some moats on the ground. This is a very good use case, actually, because these aren't necessarily foliage, but these might be something that you'd want to paint around a level somewhere or even up on the ceiling. Uh, that's a good example. Um, but the limitation for blueprints over static meshes is you don't have any palette details. That's a limiting factor you need to keep in mind. But again, you can still paint, you can still erase, you can still do the lasso tool regarding this and adjust them. You have access to all the other tools except the palette details for blueprints and even skeletal meshes. And that's a wrap. Let me know if you enjoy these feature discovery videos in the comment section. Also, don't forget to check out my website, unrealdirective.com for more quality Unreal Engine resources. I highly recommend my article, Blueprint Variables, What You Need to Know. You can find the links in the video description below the like button. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.